Welcome back to the Blaze TV podcast. It's Ed Kimberley and Stu Coles, as always. And uh, our guest on this edition is a very familiar face to everybody, uh, returning Blaze defenseman, Coventry kid, David Clements. Clam, it's so good to see you again, buddy, even though you, you know, you're literally a, a couple of miles from where we're sat right now. Uh, how you doing? Yeah, really good, thanks. Um, although struggling a little bit with hay fever at the minute, been doing... Uh, been doing really well. Just um, not long been back from Finland and stuff, so I've been working with uh, uh, the fiance's uh, stepdad, doing some gardening. So uh, yeah, just keeping busy and um, yeah, just enjoying the summer. Because I was about to ask you what you were doing because I got a text from you at half six in the morning the other day to say, "Hey, yeah, I'll come on, I'll come on the podcast, no problem, Ed. When do you want to do it?" I was like, no hockey players ever text me at six thirty in the morning. <laughs> so, um, working in the gardens with the uh, with the crack of dawn, by the looks of it, eh? Yeah, just get up, uh, crack of dawn, half six. I guess it's not the crack of dawn at this time of the year, but get up at uh, around half six time and um, head over to do some gardens as early as we can. You know, it's been it's hot in the summer, so the earlier you can start, the earlier you can finish. But enjoy just cutting some grass, doing some hedges. Uh, just you know it's got to pay the bills and stuff in the summer so I enjoy it I, I help the father-in-law and he helps me out so it's uh it's a good crack in the summer so yeah keeps you in the in-laws good books as well which is always uh, which exactly is good thing, right? exactly um we were just saying before uh, before we hit record here it feels like forever ago that we actually talked hockey with you um and I, I don't even remember if if we actually caught up about the mini series. We might have done, and it slipped my mind. But that was that was quite a big event for you, thinking about it uh, in hindsight, wasn't it? You know, you got a chance to log a lot of minutes, a couple of highlight real goals that were a lot of fun to call. <laughs> um, did that feel like a, a real big moment in your career? It was, yeah, and I think it was um, the year leading up to that as well. It's um, it's weird, it you know. For COVID and and lockdown, I think it it really hurt a lot of people, and it, you know, understandably why it would hurt a lot of people in their careers and and what was going on for. Uh, but for me, I was just kind of you know couldn't do anything. Gyms were closed. Um, you know, I I just got my head down, got out, exercised when I can. It made me needed to you know eat a bit cleaner. What, what you know when I needed to um because I couldn't you know couldn't do as much I couldn't go on the ice so for, for that year I think it you know I really got embedded in my mind to you know whenever hockey may start because Stewie was always telling us there could be a season in this month there could be a season in this month could be a season in this month so I was always kind of preparing myself uh, just to be maybe have an edge over over the players who who would be in the same boat as me so you know, lockdown really helped me in that regard. And when I got to the Elite Series, you know, I got a, a lot of opportunity from Stewie and Kino. And um, yeah, it turned out to really, to really help me progress and, you know, make GB that year and make some strides with commentary last year too. So it was a huge, huge month for me, that mini series. The format was a lot of fun too, right? In many ways, the, the pressure was off. It was, it was almost... Uh... Uh, an ideal setting for someone like yourself to take that next that next try that next step to uh, to showcase themselves in. Did you feel that too? It was, yeah, and it was, um, you know, but I, I knew it was going to be competitive, and the standard was still going to be good. You know, it was less imports, mm -hmm. obviously, but um, you know, there were there were a lot of kids from the lower league who wanted to come up and maybe make a bit of a name for themselves and. Um, impress people higher up, higher up. Sorry, and um, I think they did a really good job of that, and it it made the standard and the intensity of the games um, really high. You know, there was, you know, with the COVID rule, there was no fighting or anything like that. But you know, games were chippy, games were physical. You guys were there. Yeah, um, you know, it was there was no fans there, so I'm sure you could hear a lot of abuse being thrown uh, either way on the ice. But um, you know, it was a great standard of hockey for what it was. I thought the league did a really good job and all the all the teams and coaches involved did a really good job in that. Um, but yeah, for the standard-wise, it was, you know, a big confidence boost to me and some of the other Brits too. You know, less imports, you get to prove yourself. You, you're playing in different situations, um, playing some, 
maybe some situations that you're not used to in the regular season. So it gives you a bit of that confidence to, um, you know, impress the coaches of what you're doing and take it into the next season. So, um, yeah, like I said, it was it was a great format. Absolutely knackered by the end of it. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it, it was good in the long run for me. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, I'm going to rewind just a little bit. Did you say they told you no fighting? Yeah, well... <laughs> They, that, I, that, I thought that was the rule anyway, but there was a couple of fights, I guess, and I guess they only got five minute penalties in the end. And there was a big hoorahs about wearing masks in the box and not yeah. wearing masks in the box. Like we had no idea what was going on. We just, we just kind of took our tests every morning in the hotel. If we were negative, go to the rink, uh, go through our screening, everything like that. And then there'd be a new rule for the games uh, and whatnot in the hotel every day but apparently yeah no fighting so yeah because i i remember crocodile for uh dowd right in one of the, yeah. one of the games and uh me and Stu were you know going through what, what had happened or whatever and i looked down and they're handing them both masks in the box and they're both like what really <laughs> okay what's going on here there's nobody here yeah uh it was mental but you know what there were there were some eyes on them to to make yep. sure that they uh you know, they, they had the right protocols and standards that they were, you know, it took them a lot of time and effort, I guess, and uh, a lot of legal st stuff to, to make sure that event took place. So any eyes on them, they, even when we watch get, uh, some games in the stands, we were allowed to travel to the rink to watch some later games. And I remember Todd, who was in charge, he was like, guys, you got to wear your masks. Like you're, you're on the camera and you have to wear your masks and we can't take any risks. So, which is understandable, but uh, yep. for the fighting and no one else being in the box, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was just, uh, yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it was it was so strange, but it was kind of fun at the same time. And um, it was, yeah. you know, I think there's plenty of those little stories, I think, that will stay with us as well for, for quite some time, like you said, with, yeah. the, with the masks and whatnot. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that was weird. And then... <laughs> for many reasons for the blaze i think generally speaking 21 22 was always going to be a bit weird right we, we had the cancelled year the year before we didn't really know whether there was going to be a, a whole nother lockdown at any point but then actually that kind of smoothed itself out you know there were a couple of covid blips here and there you know we had we had to take a couple of weeks i think every team did but then we had the zamboni blow up we had the ice blow up we had the glass blow up um we really got a big dose of uh, of, of bad luck this year um, and despite all of that, it was, a, it was a really competitive product we had on the ice. And still, I feel like we may have left a few on the table in terms of points, in terms of games. And I don't know, is, is that something you feel like too? Oh, definitely. Um, <clears throat> you know, looking back on the season and even during the season, we, as a team, we all felt the exact same as, as everything you just said. Um, we all knew that we got dealt some really tough hands this, uh, this past season with, like you said, the Zamboni. Uh, we had a big delay for that Guildford game. The ice against, uh, the, the glass against Cardiff, the ice after the boxing event where we were to and fro and from Solihull every day at ridiculous times. And um, uh, the COVID, which everyone else had to go through. And, you know, we lost one of our best players in Toma for a whole season. We lost Forbesy, we lost Brawler. Um, suspensions really kicked us, I feel, more than more than other teams this year, um, myself included. So I thought I thought that we got dealt on and off the ice a really tough hand at times, and uh, we still battled through it. I mean, we finished eighth, but what were we like five points off fourth, um, and you know, maybe four four or five games prior to that last game, we were really counting on ourselves to be that number four spot. I think we beat Nottingham 10-4 away. Um, you know, I was, out, I was out injured after that, but I remember watching those games. They were really important games. We ended up losing to Nottingham at home. Um, I think we we beat Glasgow the next game at home, and then we ended up losing a couple more on the trot after that. And that really, you know, eight, eighth place and only five points off fourth, it could have been a completely different story. But... Um, Definitely looking back on it for the regular season, we could have maybe put ourselves at the table a little bit more. Uh, I thought, you know, the first few months we were playing, we were playing with eight forwards and 4D at times uh, for majority of October and November. But um, in the playoffs when we had a full lineup, uh, we showed exactly what we could do against the best team in the league. And I thought, 
it was really unlucky and you know I'm not I'm not ashamed to say it. I absolutely hate it and I, I don't believe it should be a thing in this league to to go out in playoffs on a shootout. I think it's mm. you know if if we were to lose that game in overtime, you know, five on five overtime, then then so be it. You can, you know, a, a mistake loses loses you the game, but um or a good play loses you the game. But I think in a penalty shootout in a very competitive league that we have. It was a tough way to go out, but again, we we tied them on aggregate, went into a shootout, and we we showed you know that we could play some really good hockey. But unfortunately, it was just a little bit too late for us. So yeah, we, we, I was talking to Halbert um, on on the podcast not that long back, and yeah, I, a lot of people say about the Conway goal, and don't get me wrong, hell of a goal. You know, he's a, a GB yeah. teammate of yours now, heck of a guy to have the stones to step up and pull that move. Fair enough. But the one for me that gets me, and I, I will take this with me until I don't commentate anymore, and long after, the regulation goal that goes in off escape from a pass from out in the corner, to me that hurts worse. Because, if you know, Mata keeps the shot out, which, you know, aside from that, you know, he does, that's that's a win. And that's a whole different ending to the season. But Yeah, take. and I was on the ice for that goal too. And I was, uh, you know, that, that I think it was Tyler Soy for Belfast in behind the goal line. Yeah, I was, you know, just con- you know, containing him. Didn't need to dive in. He had his face to the glass, and I was like, yep. you know, he's not making a play. Play comes off Mott skate, off uh, off Penny, off Mott stick. Sorry, off Penny skate into the back of the net, and it's a freak bounce. But we did really well to bounce back, and we had our chances that game too. But freak stuff like that, and y- you can take that. If that happened in overtime, even you say that that is what it is. But. Yep. To lose a uh, quarter final in a, in, in a shootout, it's it's not easy to take. So, no, I agree. And you know, we talked a lot about the Coventry Blaze from last season, but let's talk a little bit about David Clements because we 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 talked about you know the mini series being a big stepping stone, you know, an opportunity to put yourself in the spotlight. Clearly, took that with both hands, and you know, you look down the numbers. You know, you've had a pro career year this year in pretty much every in every category. How would David Clements assess number fifty eight season just gone? Yeah, good. I mean, um, me personally, I did set myself some some higher targets, but um, you know, I'd like to set myself myself a personal target um, a little bit higher, just just to try and push myself a bit more. Um, like I said, the, the elite series and and GB was a huge stepping stone for me, and uh, you know, Stewie Stewie was good. He, he kept to his word, and um, you know, he he helped me grow again this year with giving me some power play time and uh, playing in different situations, which helped me a lot. Um, you know, numbers wise, um, you know, I'd, I'd like to produce a, a, anywhere that I can. I, I'd like to try and help produce offensively where I can. Um, but the another big thing for me is being reliable on D. Um, I'd like to try and still push myself to be at a standard where I can be, you know, not even a thought in in you know the back of Stewie's head is to is to put me out to help even kill a game off or um, anything like that. So personally wise, though, I you know I was really happy with the season personally, uh, but it, it's still tough to have personal personal success when you know as a team we finish eighth and there's a lot of areas that we can improve on. So. Next year, I'm just hoping to have a, another personal big year, but I'm hoping the team that, you know, we have a, a, a big year as a team as well. Sure. Well said. Stu? Yeah. Yeah, Kat, I'm catching on that, actually. You're, if you were going to look at those areas of improvement for the for the Blaze, and let's focus on your position on defence, what, what would they be? What do you think the Blaze are looking defensively for next year? You know what? It, it's... It's so tough for, for someone like me to say because, um, you know, looking looking back last year, I thought we had a really good decor. Um, we had arguably one of the be- better D pairings in the league um, in Hammer and Halby. You know, they, they played some huge minutes for us. Hammer in any defensive, you know, a- anything defensive that we had, he was the first shout. He killed so many penalties for us. He, you know, he's just an absolute rock back there and our captain. So... And then Halby on the offensive side of things and, and defensively as well, don't get me wrong, but he, he helped produce a lot. Uh, Gibby was probably one of the, the best skaters that I've seen play. 
in a, in a long time and for someone of his size and structure I think give him another couple of years he could be an absolute elite defenseman in in you know a lot of pro leagues to be fair to him he was he's just an incredible skater um and you know with a bit of coaching and a bit of guidance and experience I think he could be elite um you know Ike's Ike and I enjoy playing with Ike he uh you know, offensively, he's he's so gifted. He's so silky on the puck, and his um, you know, his agility and movement uh, on the ice is is pretty special. So, uh, and Ratsy too, he was absolutely solid. He just hit everything that moved. He blocked shots. He put his body on the line, um, and he got he, you know, as the year went on, I thought he, offensively he was incredible as well. So, um, it's just it's just tough. I thought. You know, there's just there's just maybe times where where we we lapsed concentration, um, you know, miss miss some assignments that led led to goals going in the back of the net. Um, so, for a defensive standpoint, I, I'm not too sure as a player. It's it's tough to put a finger on it. I, I'm sure I'm sure Stewie and Kino have uh, some ideas for next year, but but for me as a player, I'm not too sure. One of the things that Danny mentioned when we spoke to him was the wanting to play bigger. And I, I think he was, in that particular instance, he was referring to more generally, not just as a defence. But obviously, you, you, particularly in the defensive position, you do risk treading that line of how big do you want to play and how quickly do you want to find yourself in the box? It is a, is a bit of a balance. Yeah, no, it is. It is. I, I 100% agree with that. It's... Uh... You know, for someone of my stature, maybe I can probably play the body a little bit more. It's um, it's definitely an area that I can improve on. Um, you know, but the game's evolving, the game's changing. It's uh, forwards are forwards are quick. They're they're shifty. You and uh, you've seen it many times. Um, I, I mean, it's the off season, so I'm sure I can't get fined right now. But I, you know, I get put. I get put into the boards and do my shoulder from behind and there's a hooking penalty called so um, from a hit from behind. So you, you never know. You, you don't want to play on the edge. Or you want to play with some grit. But, um, you know, the, the game's changing. It, it's quick. It, the forwards are quick. So you want to play big, but you, you don't want to exactly, exactly what you said. You don't want to be, you don't want to be going to the box and, um, you know, making your team kill for two minutes. So, um, but yeah, I mean, if we could have if we could have six Joey Ratzes on the on the back end who play the body and who can block shots, you'd have a great decor. But if you had if you had six uh, Nathaniel Halberts on the back end, and you know you, you're offensive minded, and um, I think you'd have a decor, a great decor too. So it's a really fine margin. But uh, yeah, I, I completely agree with what you said. I think. Um... It might be a little bit nervy for the coaches if you had six Halberts on the ice. Um, they might worry about... a few odd man rushes. He won't mind me saying that. There'll be a few odd man rushes. When, certainly, when when we spoke to him recently, he definitely said that he felt that he um, caused Kino um, to pull his hair out. He also said he called Stewie to pull his hair out if he had any. So it would have neither allowed would... any hair anyway. So yeah. It's... <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I think having Halbert back is is big for the club because he was such a, a standout player in not only for the Blaze but in the league as well. So being able to bring him back for next season is huge for the club and the fans. No, it is definitely. I mean, um, you know, it, it, although he's played in some in some great leagues, he was also classed as a rookie for us. So we had to give him a lot of stick for that. But um, he, he's an incredible player. He's uh, other than Gibby, I, I mean, Halby won't mind me saying that Gibby's an un unbelievable skater, maybe better than Halby, but Halby's such on the puck in the way he can get out of trouble is um, <clears throat> is so good to watch uh, as a defenseman. He, he's a great skater. Um, you know, he has a bit of a, a temper on him too, which I think if he, he won't mind me saying it because I'm just trying to help him, but if he if he just cleaned up that temper tantrum a little bit and didn't go in the box all those minutes, we could use him on the ice. Um, he'd be an even better player. So, um, but it, it, you know, it's not a bad thing. He's passionate. He he wants to win. Um, he doesn't like getting hit a bad way or teammates getting hit a bad way. So he he'd find himself in the box sometimes, which isn't a bad thing. But 
uh, for a player of his stature, he, he needs to be on the ice as much as he can. So it's really good that the Blades have got him back. I know that there was some competition to to, to get him back and rightly so, but it's uh, it's really good to see him back for us. Yeah, and you, you mentioned about how sort of like he was a, a rookie, quote unquote, a rookie. Yeah. But like that obviously comes with an adjustment period to the league, right? And like, yeah, you said, like players like yourselves uh, and Ross, who's been around the league a long time, you know, you know the league, know the refs, know how, you know, the game's going to get called front week in, week out. It does take a little bit of time for, for players coming in to sort of make that adjustment because it is di- a little bit different here. No, it is. It's, it's you know, a different. Uh... It, it also depends on where you played, right? I mean, uh, the, the Elite League, a lot of imports come over and they say it reminds them of uh, North American hockey. You know, there's quick skill players, but it's physical. Um, um, you know, guys who have typically played in Europe and a more pos- uh, possession skill game, uh, they don't adjust to it sometimes as much. But, uh, you know, Halby's a typical typical Canadian boy. He's a... Uh, He's physical, he's quick, he reads the game really well and he suits his style of hockey. And especially when, you know, he can do some amazing stuff in our ice in Coventry. Um, but when he gets on that big ice, it, you know, he's, he's got the puck on a string. So uh, it's fun to watch, but, you know, it, it, it is tough to adapt to the style of hockey over here for some people. But, you know, you just got you just to give them time. Um, you know, like for me, I mean, it took me took me what best part of uh five five years to to you know to be given that opportunity and to really uh understand assignments and you know get, get better so uh for those guys it, it, it can take you know maybe the same amount of time too so um so yeah and you you also said as well that there was a little bit of competition for for signing Halbert, and it, again something that he mentioned that there were a number of offers on the table, but because um, hockey is such a small community, um, people talk, and you know the word yeah. gets around, and and then all of a sudden social media is on fire with various different rumors, yeah. and uh, not least yourself with the the centre of one <laughs> this year. Um, how much attention do you pay to sort of social media and sort of rumours surrounding yourself, the team, the league? You know, is it something that sort of registers or are you too busy cutting hedges? <laughs> well, I'm too busy cutting hedges, that's for sure. But uh, whilst uh, Remy's watching Love Island, I'll, uh, I'll have a scroll through social media. Um, but no, it's, I, I mean, I saw it and, um, you know, I'm not, I did have a bit of attention uh, for the first, I, you know, I'm not ashamed to say for the first time in my career um, was the first time I got some attention from around the league. You know, guys are moving on, guys are getting older. I've had a good year. It's, uh, you know, it, it was weird for me. It might not have been weird for, for you know, coaching standpoint, but for me, it was a little bit different to have to deal with, you know, figuring out a future for me. But, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't too difficult for me and Remy, you know, um, you know, from a hockey standpoint, for me, I, I, I've been given an opportunity here. Um, I'm from here. It's, um, you know, I want to play here. And before I end my career, I'd like to win a championship in Coventry. And then for, for me and Remy, it's um, it's our home too. You know, her, her whole family's here. My whole family's here. So it's uh, it was, uh, you know, relatively not easy, but easy decision for us to stay here in the end. Hey. And you're right in the sense, I, you know, maybe the British players are a little bit different, but you do tend to find that there is a little bit more stability. Like the British players tend to stick by and large with their clubs. There's not so much movement. Um, I mean, unless, you know, Matt Myers goes between Nottingham and Cardiff quite a bit. But yeah. other than that, you know, there is there is that kind of, you know, that, that sort of stability. Um, but there are some movements this year. You know, a couple of guys from Nottingham have, have gone over to Europe, and another player, obviously, is for Luke Ferrara, who's who's off to Nottingham. You know, it, it it's not great from a Blaze perspective, but they, you know there are other players, and the team moves on. Exactly, yeah. And it, do you know what? For those guys from Nottingham that are going abroad, it's just a credit to how far you know uh, British hockey's coming. They they have a chance to. Uh, not only represent themselves, but represent us as a as a country as well. 
um, in those European leagues, it gets us on the map a little bit better. You know, there's older guys who have done it, like Dowdy, O'Connor. I know Farmer did it, and um, a few other guys as well. So it, it's good for those young guys to get out and go and experience different hockey and get our name out. But um, yeah, you know, it, it's, people get older. Um, you know, new coaches might come in, have different ideas, and want younger younger Brits. You know, Guildford have changed their Brits. They had some good Brits last year. And, you know, it just it just all depends on Brits. Um, there can be some really good stability for Brits, but some of the Brits, are, you know, there might not be. There might be up-and-coming mm-hmm. Brits that you could get replaced with. So um, it's not easy at times, but, you know, I will say for the majority of the Brits, it's, uh, you know, that you can be stable. Um, but it's always a competition against the imports and it's not a bad thing. It's, you know, it makes the league great. It's, uh, it makes the league as competitive as it is. And um, it, it's good to be able to battle against those guys and prove that, you know, you, you can compete against this caliber of hockey. So, um, yeah, I'm sure in the future, in the next three or four years, we'll see some really good Brits coming through too. I think that's, I think the, 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 one of the key points that you mentioned there is that testament to the standard of the elite league in British hockey, that players are being noticed and picked up. You know, a, a combination of the, the stature of the league and also the exposure at the World Championships. Yeah, 100%. It's, um, it's come along such a long, it, it's, it's come along such a long way. Um, and, you know, we, we spoke about it, GB a little bit this year. I mean, Pete showed us the team that he took to his ever, first ever World Championships. And uh, it's just mental to see, you know, I think his first ever game he coached, he said, was against Australia. And um, to come where we were, you know, last year and, um, you know, get relegated and, you know, by a, by a point or two, it was it was tough. But we're putting the name on the map and it's making a lot of good players want to come and play over here. So um, I think in... In years to come, this league could be, um, you know, fighting for, you know, one of the top leagues in Europe, if you'd like it. If, uh, you know, in a lot of years to come, it's got a big future ahead of it, this league. So um, if things keep going the way they are, I don't see, uh, I don't see why uh, more British players will be, will be coming through and getting a chance and uh, more special imports will be coming over too. And that experience for yourself, I mean, you, you've had now, you know, a couple of tournaments playing against some of the best players in the world. That must be just, like, just even though it's a small tournament, it must be just huge experience to see what the, the best of the best are like. It is. And it's, um, you know, to, some of those players, it's, it's, against some of them, I'm not afraid to say, it, some of them seem to not get out of even second year when they're playing. You know, but then when you go and play and watch them play against, you know, Sweden, Finland, for example, it was it was incredible to watch. I mean, don't get me wrong, we took we took those teams to, you know, even though the Sweden and Finland game, we you know, was six nothing. It was, uh, you know, we we gave them a hell of a run for for those games, and people write us off before the team tournaments even started. So, uh, but to play against those caliber of players is is incredible. It's. Uh, you just see the, the the standard of what those NHL players are playing in, you know, day in day out. It's it's an incredible standard of hockey, um, but it pushes it. You know, being in that top division, I hope it pushed younger Brits to uh, to work harder and you know to have a goal of wanting to be there. I know I know that uh, us GB players who were just there last year, we want to get straight back into that top division. So. Yeah. Um, it's definitely a huge motivate, motivator for everyone. And, and what an opportunity to do it, to get back into that top division by having the tournament at home in Great Britain. Um, home fans, you know, hopefully packed out building. You know, it, you know, it, there's a real chance to just bounce straight back up again. No, there is. And, you know, it's, a, it's, I think it's amazing that we get to host it. It gives us a, a real advantage, I hope. I hope as many people come out and enjoy it and get behind us as, as much as they can. You know, you know, the team, the team and the coaching staff and everyone, everyone off the ice deserves it. A lot of hard work's gone into gone into the team over a lot amount of years. And you know, I've said it a few times what the team's done over the last 
five, six years to get up to that top division was was incredible. Uh, you know, in Hungary, they, they were meant to go straight back down and they ended up winning gold. It's, it, it was amazing. And, uh, you know, the goal is to be in that division now. You've been there, you've seen the way you get treated on and off the ice, the, the standard, the, the arenas. Um, you know, if, we, if, if the fans and everyone can get behind us in Nottingham, I think, I think it'll give us a real, real big boost to get back up to that top division. Well, we certainly hope that, that you are involved um, with Team GB come, come April, May time um, in Nottingham and, and having success, but not before you've done some, some solid work and some, had an excellent season with the Blaze as well. That's the plan. That's the plan to get some silverware this year. And uh, yeah, that's, that, that's the main goal. Edward. You've done such a wonderful job, Stu. You, you've asked everything I wanted to ask. Uh, you know, everything in between as well. You picked up on, and of course, great guest and David Clements. You know, honestly, I, I think I remember when you came over and uh, one of Chuck's years, right? Kind of came yeah. uh, halfway through the year. We were in MK, and God, was that six years ago now? That, so that, that, uh, six, seven years ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That that transition from from the kid you were then to who you are now. You know, representing GB. Um, trying to make yourself a mainstay there. You've got a few years under your belt to, you know, really extend that, that international career out, you know, be a letter bearer for the Blaze, you know, wanting to be a champion for the Blaze um, and, you know, not just, you know, be there, but to really actively contribute, log in a lot of minutes, um, acting as that positive influence. It, it's cool. And you know what? It's really cool from a, uh, from a Coventry kid to do that as well. So. No, it is. Yeah. And I just want to point. say too. Yeah, no, it is. I, and I just want to say too, is there's, uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of kids too that I, I I know personally from people that I've played with. It's uh, it's not easy to you know struggle to get ice time in, in the elite league, and that's just the way it is. If you can bear your time and work hard and um, and get by, that you know there there will be an opportunity. So. Uh, you just got to keep going with it. You know, it took me a long time, but it's it's been worth the wait. So, and you got to enjoy the journey as well. That's, that's yeah, uh, exactly, that's exactly. Part of the experience. So, Dave, yeah. honestly, I really, really appreciate you coming and spending some time chatting to us. Um, enjoy the rest of your summer. Be damn careful next to any chainsaws. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and fingers crossed for a stable and uh, and successful season to come. Right. Yeah, definitely. Gonna I can't wait to see all the Blaze fans and uh come come August, September time and uh let's get behind us as much as you can. Let's win some silverware. Yeah, yeah. So guys, thank you so much once again for tuning in to the Blaze TV podcast with me, Ed from Stu, from Dave, and from everybody at the Blaze organization. We wish you the, the loveliest of summers and we'll see you hopefully after some signing news soon. Take care for now. Bye.